So just as Grace is making her way to the stage, I'll just introduce her. So Grace is Program Director of MasterCard Foundation Fund for Resilience and Prosperity. She's work, she works at KPMG International Development Advisory Services under the MasterCard Foundation Fund for Resilience and Prosperity. She has over 14 years of experience in project management, consulting, technical assistance, and capacity building. She provides strategic and technical leadership, program management and oversight, as well as stakeholder relationship management. Grace has managed multidisciplinary and diverse teams to ensure successful, high quality and program implementation. May I ask those of you that are still talking, may I ask those of you that are still talking on the side of the room if you'd like to make your way outside. Everybody else, please be seated. We'd like to begin. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Grace Mberia. Um, so I've just been introduced, the program director for the MasterCard Foundation Fund for, Rural Pro for Resilience and Prosperity. Um, so today we'll be talking about integrating climate change uh, adaptation and mitigation into agriculture. So a bit of background of why this topic is really important to us is um, starting with the introduction to the fund. So the Fund for Resilience and Prosperity is a 126 million fund that will run for the next seven years. And um, this fund is funded by the MasterCard Foundation and it's managed by KPMG. So um, the team is actually, uh, that is implementing the program is KPMG. Um, this program in specific, the main objective is job creation for young women and men in Africa, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa. And we are targeting 20 countries um, across three sectors. And these three sectors is agriculture, climate adaptation, and digital economy. So for these three sectors, what we're looking at is targeting private sector SMEs that are operating in these three sectors that have the potential to create jobs for young women and men. And these jobs, we would like to consider them to be dignified and fulfilling jobs. So not just any kind of job. And um, the interventions that we are looking at are a challenge fund at first, and so that's how we're going to onboard our, our SMEs. So we're going to run a competition. We are starting with the agriculture competition, which will be launching in February. And for this competition, um, we would like to see how the SMEs that we support through grants can actually integrate um, climate adaptation into the value chain anywhere in the value chain that they're they are operating in, how can they see um, where, how can they um, integrate climate adaptation into this? So the main reason then that we want to look at this is um, agriculture and climate change are interrelated, um, especially in Africa where um, the agriculture sector in Africa has the potential to create uh, a tremendous number of uh, jobs for the youth uh, because this is the largest sector in Africa and it's actually the fastest growing sector in Africa. So looking at this ag sector which is large and fast growing and then now looking on this other side on SMEs, SMEs actually form 90% of businesses in Africa. So they actually have the potential to create significant change if they're actually able to integrate climate adaptation into their practices. So if we encourage and support uh, young people to actually participate in agriculture, trying to change their mindsets um, and helping them see that they can actually address 
some of the challenges that they have identified. Um, some of these challenges uh, that pose an immense uh, issue for Africa um, from an agriculture perspective is, of course, um, crops are foundational to African diets, um, wheat, maize, sorghum, uh, millet, and these crops are actually struggling to survive uh, due to the rising temperatures in the continent. And then that leads to an issue of food security and then forces Africa to continue importing grains, whereas they actually have the capacity to grow and process these grains within the continent. Um, livestock breeding would be affected by an increase in the number of days of extreme heat, uh, heat stress per year, and then also up to 95% of agriculture is actually rain-fed. Um, that's in Africa. So given climate change has an impact on uh, water availability, so it leads to water scarcity, then if we incorporate climate adaptation into agricultural practices by these SMEs, then we have a chance to create more resilience uh, for the sector from a climate perspective. And um, just looking at this uh, linkage between climate change and agriculture, of course, the agriculture sector does contribute significantly to greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and if, they were, if we were able to adopt uh, resilience and mitigation strategies, uh, especially the mitigation aspect, then would definitely be able to lead to major reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. And then on the flip side, agriculture is highly impacted by climate change just like I've mentioned earlier. Um, and what we're looking at is global emissions, if they actually continue to increase at the rate that they are, then Africa will be significantly impacted. So looking at um, the dry gets drier, the wet gets wetter, longer seasons of rain in, in the areas that are impacted, so crops are affected, longer seasons of drought, meaning um, no farming can happen during those periods. So what then can we do um, to see how these SMEs that we are going to fund can support in creating resilience and in reducing uh, GHGs? So what this can do, um, if we look at it in terms of them adapting climate smart agriculture in various points in the value chain, they can actually sustainably increase um, productivity and income, uh, which then leads to an income uplift for the SMEs and then able to catalyze job creation for the youth. And then it could actually also enhance achievement of uh, food security and the development goals. And just looking at that link, we've gone um, further to just assess what kind of uh, adaptation solutions can our SMEs, the ones that we are funding, uh, actually adapt and how we would consider them adapting it is at the point of onboarding, we would be able to assess whether there are some of these SMEs that are already um, practicing some of these uh, so climate smart agriculture solutions. And since we'll also be providing technical assistance, we'll be able to assess for some of these SMEs, how can we actually support them to then integrate some of these practices into their current business. So um, examples would be supporting businesses that specialize in developing and selling um, climate resilient crop varieties. Um, so that would actually help farmers to um, still farm with the current um, climate, uh, uh, climate situation, but still get better production in the end, which then still uplifts their income. And we've seen examples of this where um, just changing the, the kind of, of uh, resilient crop varieties would increase 
productivity over a long period. Another example is supporting um, organizations that are offering crop insurance services. So we actually did this successfully in our previous uh, program, and we believe this has actually created even more resilience into the, the whole agriculture value chain. Mitigation um, is, is uh, more on a larger scale. So maybe some of the examples we can look at is working with SMEs with uh, using crop residues, um, animal waste and biomass for bioenergy production, for instance, which then is able to reduce GHGs at farm level. And why are we interested in this? If you look at the statistics from 2020, um, agriculture, uh, if you look at the climate finance flow in Africa in 2020, uh, only 16% went to agriculture. And yet we are saying that agriculture is the largest sector. We are saying that 90% of SMEs in Africa are, 90% of businesses in Africa are actually SMEs. And most of these SMEs are playing in the agriculture space. So if there's such limited funding on climate finance, then what happens is this sector will remain to be significantly impacted. Food security remains an issue and even gets worse. And the income of smallholder farmers who form a very huge uh, portion of the population actually end up being in a worse position year by year. So that's why we are really passionate about this as the MasterCard Foundation Fund for Resilience and Prosperity. And that's why we want to actually um, support SMEs to make sure that even as they are implementing the projects that we fund, they actually are actively uh, looking for solutions uh, for climate adaptation that then trickles down all the way to the smallholder farmer attracts the youth because they're interested in making a difference and uplifts the income of the communities that these SMEs will be operating in. So it's something that we are really, really looking forward to seeing how this plays out. And um, if any of you are in that space, we encourage you to apply um, for the funding. We'll be launching in February uh, so please uh, do visit our exhibition stand. We can take your contacts and we can share more information about the fund. Um, and for well, these SMEs that will be funding, even as they mature, then they would create a pipeline for investors. So um, that's how then we'll be able to connect them with um, partnering with investors for them to then get um, private, sec uh, private equity, and debt investment. So we want to walk that journey. We have the advantage of having uh, seven years uh, for this program. So yeah, we're looking forward to then working with the entire ecosystem to try and make this a success. Any questions? All right, we look forward then to seeing you at our stand later.